my name's Eric, or Motivate, or Spiv, depending on which uh, occupation you meet me, DJing, rapping, hosting, club rooms, Twitter spaces, or festivals and conferences. And I am hosting this panel today on PFPs and community, and we have some really amazing people on stage that I'm gonna go and introduce one by one. Uh, and at the end of that, we're not gonna waste any time and we're gonna jump right into it. And uh, I guess just a little bit more on my background is uh, about a year and a half ago, I uh, started talking about NFTs on Clubhouse and um, it steamrolled and snowballed into a quarter of a million person community. And now I have the largest and fastest growing NFT and DeFi community in the world with official partnerships with Twitter. As an artist and curator and cultivator, I've been on the homepage of OpenSea. I had a historic uh, NFT drop that took over all of Penn Station for almost three weeks before NFT NYC, which I also hosted, as well as hosted the Central Con and NFT Basel for GDA Capital and blah, 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 blah. So anyways, I'm here to help educate, empower, connect, bridge, build, all that. So <laughs> anyways, <laughs> let's, um, let's get into it. Just uh, introduce yourselves one by one and then we'll start asking questions. And at the end, I will try my best to be responsive of time and uh, or receptive of time and we'll do some Q and A and, and free will. So let's get Hi. into it. My name is Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy knows on Twitter. It's a bit of a double entendre because uh, my background is as a clown and performance artist turned handyman uh, when theaters closed during the pandemic, now turned community manager and uh, unofficial encyclopedia on vFriends for, for our community there. So I make content about vFriends and now talk about storytelling and community. Happy to be here. Hey y'all. Uh, so I am Katrina Gamoida Smith. I don't even know how to introduce myself anymore, to be honest. Uh, I kind of run the gamut in the space, so I am one of the original team members of Pizza Dow, and Pizza Dow is here giving out free pizza outside, so be sure to stop by. Pizza and swag, we have like the sickest swag in the game. Um, but one of kind of the, the founders of Pizza Dow, and over the last year have done a multitude of things from Web3 consulting to being on NFT projects. Um, and I recently just accepted an offer at Vayner NFT to be their future chief of staff. And oh. so very, very excited for that opportunity. And I feel like that kind of makes us automatically best friends. <laughs> yeah. So that's me. Thank you. Nice to meet you. What up, y'all? I'm Aiden, Aiden Cullen. Somehow, I have a black eye on this photo. I have no idea <laughs> how this photo was, was chosen. <laughs> um, it's pretty funny, honestly fire. Um, I'm a photographer and director uh, for the past five years. Been doing a lot of stuff, creative direction in the music, fashion, commercial spaces for brands like Nike, Adidas, Converse, ASAP Rocky, Halsey, Trippy Red, whatever, bunch of people. Um, and got pretty into Web3 a year ago, and because I think I was increasingly more frustrated with chasing invoices and ideas getting watered down from labels and companies, so I launched a project called The Heart Project, um, which we launched six months ago. It's been a pretty crazy ride. It's a 10,000 collection, sold out in 20 seconds, and we've been, uh, building some cool stuff since then, which we'll get into, and have a really cool community, and trying to just, you know, the goal of our thing is, you know, we raised a bunch of money through NFTs to empower creatives, and if the communities like cool ideas, we help bring them to life, and help execute and produce and release them in cool ways, so, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Check, check. Hi, my name is Ashira Fox, Ashira Siegel Fox. Um, I got into NFTs a little over a year ago through Clubhouse. I'm an artist, I'm a multidisciplinary mixed media artist. Uh, I fell into collectibles shortly after that, and I ended up uh, serendipitously helping Lobato's launch. Um, it's a big 10K collection. Uh, we launched in August. 
Um, and then after that, I was asked to help launch another collection called Toy Boogers. I was very burnt out from launching Roboto, so I said no a bunch of times, um, but they kept asking me, and finally I felt better and I said yes. Um, and it was, it's been amazing. Uh, after we launched, I joined, I continued on with the team, um, and so I'm on, I'm currently on that team, um, and I'm also helping to launch another collection uh, in a few weeks called Mad Jellies. Super excited, I build community, it seems like, wherever I go, because I really like people <laughs> a lot. Um, and I'm just really happy to be here and talk about my experience. I, there is no way a year ago I would have thought that I would be on a panel up here at NFTLA with, with these lovely people talking about my experiences. It's been a really wild ride, and I'm super grateful to be here. Thank you. Hey, I'm Will Carsola. Uh, I've been making cartoons for Adult Swim for almost the last decade. Um, I co-created Mr. Pickles and Mama Named Me Sheriff, and then last year got into NFTs. Uh, I, so I'm doing two PFP projects, doing the art for that. Uh, the first one is Murderhead Death Club for Liquid Death, which is just sold out a few days ago. Yeah. And uh, thank you. And the, uh, the second one is called Moon Trash. It's gonna be more of my like kind of psychedelic monsters and that should be out in a couple months or so. Yeah. Alrighty, I guess it's now my job, right? <laughs> um, well, let's give it up for the great panel that we have up here again. All amazing individuals. All right, so. Um, we know NFTs, or as I call them, new friendship tech, uh, which is also a series that I just launched, uh, are kind of undoing the, I guess, ways in which we communicate and connect and collaborate and cultivate creativity. It's a lot of C's. It's really cool. Um, so with that said, you know, I think social media has it was originally in place to bring people together and then products have been overbuilt over time because they put profit over people and now they've pushed people further and further apart because of algorithms and things we have no control over. So um, that said, we've all had to find new ways, especially during the pandemic when we've been so distant more than ever, detached and uh, disconnected to find ways to build. And all of you have found ways to do that for multiple communities, your voices for multiple communities. You represent a lot of communities that are visible all over the world. And you now have to maintain and sustain that for longevity. So what does community building for posterity and the future look like for you? And uh, this question can be answered by anybody on stage. Or anyone? Yeah, <laughs> I'll just start briefly. I'll say I think it provided all the things that you said that it's new friendship tech and things are changing. I think the way you build for prosperity is the same way that you would have built last year and the year before. People still communicate and cherish the same things. So like making people feel valued, making people feel heard, providing mutual support, providing education, um, all of those things and more. I think it looks the same, there's just new mediums, right? Yeah, uh, so this is this is pretty important to the work that Pizza Now has done. Um, you know, the the main contributor I think th to Pizza Now's success is that there's always been a vision and a goal and like a like a common use case for the community to wrap themselves around since day one. And that mission is to make pizza free. It's to change the world's relationship with food or pizza forever, right? And so at the end of the day, it's like no matter what is coming at you in life, you can always map back to this idea of like, I love pizza. <laughs> and it might sound silly, but it's actually, uh, 
the world's favorite food, almost undeniably, right? We find pizza on literally every continent. Australia has like a government run pizza shop. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Australia, Antarctica, even more shocking. Uh, Antarctica has a government run pizza shop down in Antarctica, right? And so you find pizza all over the world, but like at the end of the day, when people are tired, uh, when their nine to five is kicking them in the side, right? When their family and friends are, are like, oh, come out tonight, right? It's like, at the end of the day, there's a common mission, a common vision to serve pizza and to make pizza free. And so I think that's been pretty paramount to Pizza Dow's community being, like you said, like posterity, lasting long term, being sustainable, is it's like, that's our guiding light at the end of the day. Um, and the other thing I would say is uh, we're DAO, right? And so it's a collective of voices who can show up in whatever capacity they want. Uh, if you're a lawyer and you're kind of tired of doing some of the, the work that you do that's so stressful, maybe you wanna be a lawyer for pizza, right? Or maybe you just wanna draw some pictures of pizza, whatever it is, uh, it's a really great organizing function to have that vision, that North Star for folks to look at at the end of the day, whether they commit 40 hours a week to pizza or four hours a week, right? Whatever that might be. Um, and it's actually, it's it's the reason that Pizza Now has been around for over a year and, and it's here at the event, right? Because we share that vision, so. Um, I'm gluten-free. <laughs> we we uh, make <laughs> sure to bring gluten-free pizza wherever we go. Perfect. Um, yeah, I, I think to piggyback on that, uh, I think at the end of the day, like everyone wants a tribe and people to identify with. And I think we, we definitely have some, some DAO structure implemented in what we do at Hearts. But I think at the end of the day, like full decentralization is, is super new and, and super fascinating and nuanced. But I think it's very important to have a few drivers of community um, and have people that it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, we came together to do this. We have ideas. And it is about empowering everyone. but. We've been learning every step along the way, and there's 6,000 holders of our project who all have a different idea of what community means, so it's like, how do things get done? So I think a lot of it is like, what's, what's worked for us and sustained for us has been sticking clear to the original vision of why we built this, and trying to like really listen to as many things as possible while still having organizers of certain segments that keep things going forward because like full decentralization is, it's gnarly and not, not sitting up here to lie, it, it's crazy. Um, and I think we're in this space where there's like 10 new projects a day and there's a lot of money being made everywhere and it is really hard to sustain something but I think it's like being present and really listening to people and like really bridging the gap between like digital and physical and being super consistent is, is something that's helped us. And just like at the end of the day, I think a lot of people want to take it different ways and we need to like filter everything but still remember why we started and like the original white paper and try to stay as close to that as possible with while hearing all the opinions, which is a constantly evolving uh, beast. But I think that's, that's what worked for us is like appointing some organizers of segments of the DAO or the project. And I think, yeah, NFT is a super cool way to enforce that and make that possible in a, a cool new way and token gate certain things and keep things less token gated and give people access and a sense of belonging. Um, I think this can facilitate that, so, yeah. Yeah, you know, when we were talking about prosperity and community building and all that, I think um, one of the most important things for me personally is just being an example of possibility and what the possibilities could be. Um, so like the project that I'm currently um, on, Toy Boogers, um, you know, he, he's been, cr Doug, he's an amazing artist and he's been an artist for a long time, but he, you know, he hadn't really done anything large before like that. Um, but to see him do his thing, and I had been, like we had been friends before, and I had seen him, you know, he'd come into the Discord, he'd come into like another Discord we were in, I was in, and be like, oh hey, look at this thing, you know, look at this toy booger, I think it's gonna be a few more weeks, you know, and a few weeks would go by, and then he'd drop another one, oh, I think it's gonna be a few more weeks, but we were able to watch him build his project, um, and 
you know, to be able to be an example for everybody else and especially for our communities and to show them the possibilities um, of, of how to be successful in the space and the possibility of like, you know, we are all pretty new here. So if we're able to do it, then so is anybody else, you know? And I feel like that sort of thing is really, um, is important to bring to our community. And we've had a number of community members um, that have gone on to start their own projects, um, specifically because they were inspired by toy boogers and by stuff that they had seen us do. Um, and so, yeah, that I think is really, is important for community and prosperity and, and all that. Yeah, when I think about uh, community and NFTs, you know, I kind of think to making cartoon shows where, you know, I'll bring an idea into the writer's room and there's, say, five, six people, and I'll think that the idea is 100% good to go a lot of times, but it's, it, it never is, you know? So the writers, they deconstruct it, and we throw out a bunch of input and a bunch of ideas and, and some sticks, and then we construct it back up, and that's what becomes an episode. So when it comes to NFTs, you know, I like the idea of, well, now there's not five or six people, there's thousands of people putting in input, and you know, it's that collective voice that's going to help these projects evolve and become something bigger than my first idea, so, yeah. Very cool, I dig all those answers. And uh, I think if I was to nail it down to five things, it sounds like transparency, authenticity, consideration, uh, patience, and understanding. And, and mutual goals. And mutually beneficial situations for everybody to win. And looking ahead, you, you all are bigger picture people. And if your community shares that ethos, ideally they're pushing your ideas forward and dropping theirs into the hat and you all can cultivate with your community and create something special. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so that said, you know, what would you say is like one of the biggest hurdles or challenges that we've found since the beginning of this, since you all are very hands-on with your communities, you're all very hyper alert, hyper active, and this space doesn't stop. It's 24 hours, seven days a week. It, you gotta unplug and disconnect, right? Uh, I've turned off Discord, Telegram, WhatsApp. Like I'm dealing with a quarter of a million people. I, I, and still DJing and throwing parties and blah, blah, blah. I, I'd be curious, like my, my biggest hurdle is like pumping the brakes and, and, and trusting my body and, and mind to like detach for a minute. So what is like a big hurdle that you've uh, incurred or come across rather as an obstruction or adversity in community building? Should I go in order? I think it's exactly what you just said, it's time, it's capacity. Um, yeah, it's, um, I guess, being accountable to yourself to just know your limits, I suppose. Like, it's, an, it's a marathon. If you really wanna do this for a lot of people, for a lot of mutual good, for a long time, you can't do it 24 hours a day. You have to sleep, you have to eat, you have to adapt to things that happen, there's life. You wanna know something really bad? So. <laughs> Did you go to sleep very, very late last night, Eric? Oh Did yeah. you get any sleep last I, night? I DJed the rooftop of the Ace, and then did such a great job that I got asked to DJ this after hour, and then just rolled in here two minutes before this, and here we go. And then Woo! today, si Woo! six to midnight, I've got <laughs> another event with a bunch of great people. Eric is but being a bad example. Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's an edutainment, okay? That's what a I'm fun providing. Example. <laughs> Li live vicariously through me on what not to do. Well, but, um, but have you eaten anything? Have you had some water? Well, so that was exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. So one thing I've managed to uh, learn with adversity and obstruction in this space for community building is I've literally changed my routine. I've completely changed my regiment to the point that I've been doing these uh, heel drinks and I think that's like a step above Soylent. I don't know, I, I don't know. But I'm about efficiency with a lot of the things that I do in life. And you know, 
you have to be very methodical and very pragmatic, especially when you're answering to so many different people and voices and you can't please everybody. It's like being president. You literally, it's a lose-lose situation. So you have to be vulnerable to accept what people are approaching you with and you have to be able to take the critique and criticism. And you know, I, uh, 2016, I had a near fatal car accident. I had $800,000 worth of medical surgery, had heart surgery, leg surgery, hip surgery. And that was because I wasn't listening to my body, right? I wasn't listening to the fact that I needed to sleep and I fell asleep at the wheel. Oh. Two years on bed rest. So now in round two, you know, I can't be like I gotta make up for lost time, but in this space, people are burning out left and right and they don't understand how to stop. And so I would say like definitely breaks and time and regiment and schedule for me. But I do want to hear from the rest of you in terms of what is something that you've incurred and how did you solve it? How did you beat, how did you jump the, hur jump the shark or the hurdle? Yeah, so my answer to that is kind of twofold and I was like looking at the screen to make sure I knew what we were talking about. So I won't get too far on a tangent, but I have an answer both for like the DAO side and the NFT side. From the DAO side, um, you know, it's so funny when I was sitting down with folks a year ago to tell them about the successes that Pizza Now had seen, right? We, we raised $1.25 million uh, after three weeks of meeting each other as strangers, which might not seem like a lot in today's NFT terms, but we were modeled off of hash masks and crypto kitties, right? We were pre board Ape Yacht Club, and so $1.25 million in March of last year was a big deal. Um, and I was talking to all these folks about our successes and they were like, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's just not gonna work out. And I was like, what do you mean? And there were people who were like, you know, it's just not in, it's just, it's just not a human, uh, uh, like a, it, as humans, we want hierarchy. We want to report to someone. We want structure and all these things. And like, uh, as much as we like the uh, bright eye, uh, bright eye, bushy tailed idea of DAOs, right? It's just not going to work out for you. And I was like, ah, it's going to be really interesting to see, right? I don't know. It's a, it's one. It's the first DAO that I ever started. And so, I think that that's shown up a little bit over the last year, where it's like without a true uh, uh, person in charge, folks can show up, they can come and go as they please, right? Like, which, like I said before, it's like some people will throw 40 hours a week at the Dow and some throw four and some throw four minutes. Um, but like, that is definitely a very interesting um, challenge of having a Dow is like, how do you get people to show up consistently across time? And at Pizza Dow, we've been fortunate to just have such a strong community. Again, I think it's a bit of the North Star, but it's, it's not always going to be the case when folks don't necessarily have to have um, have to show up for things, they might not. Um, so that's what I would say is challenging about DAOs. For NFTs, I would say it's a little bit uh, along the lines of what y'all are talking about is like, People almost, when I say people, I mean more like community members and collectors of NFTs have a, a bit of some unrealistic expectations when it comes to how the leaders of a project should show up for the project, right? And it's like never before have business owners, uh, product developers had this relationship with their community where they were in front of their face all the time and Twitter and Discord in their DMs, et cetera. And so it creates this like overwhelming pressure or sense of I have to be a available all the time, and if I don't, I'm failing in some capacity. And so I think what y'all said about taking a moment to step away and say like, you know, it's actually I can deliver more when I'm not always talking to you. <laughs> I can actually get more work done when I'm not always responding on Twitter or on Discord. And so remembering that as like a creator or community owner or leader or anything like that, it's like, how do I know that I'm actually serving my community better when I do take the time to take care of myself and the work, <laughs> the work that needs to get done? I agree, heavily echo everything that's been said and I'll add quickly, I know we're running out of time. Um, I think, yeah, the reason I got into space is I was like, okay, this technology can really help creatives focus on ideas rather than like chasing the money to get the ideas out there. Um, but it's, it's really tricky because you're infusing like money and art into one world, smashing it together. And originally people bought into our project because we're trying to you know, change the way we look at collaboration and art, but then our floor 20X'd and people are like, that's cool, but 20 grand is way cooler. 
Um, and I get it, um, everyone has things to deal with, but I think it's like the constant balance of like trying to cater to creative things and stick to the mission when like the blunt reality in my opinion is like 90% of people are in the NFT space to make money. And that's totally okay right now, that's what it is. And I think like what I'm super excited about is like watching NFTs change how we look at film and fashion and, and all these other things, music, um, that's like the long game, but I think for people to really buy in, it, it's just creating really fascinating case studies of that. And I think the rest of the world will just have to catch up because right now the mainstream is like, oh, I see an ape going for $10 million. Like, what the, what the heck? Um, but I think, yeah, it's just like staying true to the mission, creating case studies and like trying to not cater to the 90% of the community that's like, we want money, um, which is hard. Yeah, I would echo everything that everybody up here has said so far. Um, I would say that, you know, one of the challenging, one of the most challenging things is really like, you know, even when people are coming in like, when, 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 you know, when, when floor rise, when, what are you doing for my bags, like that kind of thing. And I think um, to be able to utilize the rest of the community to bring that person, to bring those people in, um, as opposed to like just uh, casting them out, right? Like we had, I was helping, um, there's another project that I'm very, very fond of called Average Creatures, and when they launched, um, it's a beautiful art project. I'm not gonna show it, um, it's not my project. But um, you know, I was host, I was co-hosting a Spaces, and somebody came up, um, and this was like a reveal party. Somebody came up and basically told us that he had just, he had seen it, he had seen it pop on Icy Tools, so he threw 20K into it, he scooped up the floor, right? So he didn't mint, he bought secondary, put 20K into it, and he wanted to know what the artist was gonna do in the next two weeks. He wanted to know how the artist was gonna pump his bags, like get him money in the next two weeks. And so I get like a little protective of my friends in those situations. <laughs> um, so, you know, I let him know that like, the artist is not doing anything to pump his bags in two weeks. She just created a 10K project of all handmade pieces, all handmade backgrounds, and the artist has tons of stuff. Did you go into the Discord? Did you did you read like anything of her history? You know, and so, but I wasn't super harsh, and in the end, you know, we were able to actually like bring him in and bring him into the Discord, and he, you know, I don't know what he's gonna do with his bags, but he chilled, you know, so it was, and I think on a personal level, um, you know, when I came into this space, I thought that I had good boundaries. I thought that I had the ability to say no. And there was a moment where I got extremely burnt out. And it took me about two months, like really two months, to feel like myself again. Um, I have a three-year-old and I have a six-year-old and I can't mess around with getting burnt out. I really can't mess around. So at that point, I realized, um, you know, I just have to have better boundaries. And so now I really practice saying no a lot. Um, I'm very clear right now that I'm not taking on any other projects until at least July. Um, and I have to have that firm, firm, firm boundary because in this space, people will just try and railroad all the time because everybody has their agendas and it's fine. Like it's okay that everybody has their agendas, but we need to be for ourselves, the type, the, the people that we need to be so that we can take that space and rest and do what we can so that, you know, if I take on more projects, then I'm not gonna be there fully for the projects that I already have, that I'm already committed to. Um, and so that has been really a big learning experience. Um, and I will say, I don't remember where I saw it, but I saw recently somebody say something like, when I say no, um, when I say no, uh, it's not me giving up opportunities, it's me passing on jobs. Well said. Stuff. Yeah, I agree. It's important to, to slow down. That's kind of been a, I'm a bit of an overworker, crazy artist, always <laughs> feeling like I need to be doing something. Um, so, you know, over the years, working myself too hard all the time, burning out, uh, what I've learned for me is that 
Well, meditation helps me, getting some exercise, going outside, learning you know, how to say no is super important. Uh, I also have a, a kid now, he's almost two, and uh, so you know, I make time to go on walks with him, and you know, often doing things like that, once I turn off my creative brain, it's the same with writing. The right ideas actually come in once you stop trying to find them. And you know, in 2020 came around, my anxiety reached a, a peak, you know? And then we're looking at screens more because we're not seeing people in person. So uh, I became more, well of, uh, more aware of, you know, mental health, like anxiety. And so I started taking care of myself more. So, you know, when NFTs came around, I wanted to try and put those lessons I've learned into projects if I can. You know, I was very uh, turned away by Discord at first because a lot of these projects, you know, it's just a grind, grind, grind. And NFTs, the space is, is evolving fast. So you want to try to keep up. But yeah, you need to, you know, so with, with our Discords, you know, we want to do things that matter and not rush things and take our time and do things right rather than, you know, quality over quantity. So. Got one, I've got one more piece on this. I know we have to wrap up, but th there's something that hasn't been mentioned, which is Go ahead. that take any of these things and like you'll be, take any one of them and you're making preventative measures for the balance, but there's also the forgiveness for the mistakes you've already made. And balance is gonna look different for everybody. Some people can DJ all night, show up, do a great job. You may or may not be able to. And so like you have to, you have to adapt as you go and forgive yourself if you're, in a, if you're in a tight spot because beyond the physical element of this is the mental element and if you're watching 20% swings on a floor price and you're feeling bad, then you need to adjust because that's not sustainable. And I, really quickly, I would say level setting expectations is massive and getting ahead of that um, is something that was super, super helpful. Um, being massively clear if you're starting a project, what the expectation is of output, and try not to ever say a hard date, because tech always has delays. Absolutely. So that uh, is gonna have to be our cutoff for mental health and wellness, and uh, give you guys some more space and time and trust the process and understand managing expectations versus reality two different things, so take care of yourself first and foremost because you have to take care of the people and let the business run itself, but you can't take care of the people unless you take care of yourself first, so. Everybody give it up for our panel. This is our time here. Much love and appreciation. Thank you all for your shares. And I wish we had more time, but yeah, that's it. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.